No, you're not dreaming. You're not tripping either. It's not April Fools, and you did not misread the title of the video. Or maybe you did, because you couldn't believe that I'm doing an admirable animation on a crossover between two of the most despised reboots of all time. Shows that make up a good portion of my atrocity reviews. It's a crossover that a lot of people expected to suck. Hell, before it came out, I expected it to suck. But, to quote my Painbow review, Expecting and desiring are two different things. Whenever that I predict that something is going to turn out terribly, I'd be perfectly happy to be proven wrong. Ecstatic, as a matter of fact. I mean, a good product is a good product, and more good cartoons can only be a good thing, right? It's time for me to put my money where my mouth is, because I think this crossover is a good episode, and I'm happy about that fact. And because season finales of admirable animations are reserved for shows that I've repeatedly bashed on animated atrocities, I thought that this all came together nicely. Technically speaking, this is a Teen Titans Go episode. I say technically because this episode was written by a writer for Powerpuff Girls 2016. While she later wrote another episode for Teen Titans Go, this was her first. That's not to say that I'm trying to distance this show from Teen Titans Go, because I'm not. This episode is actually a lot closer to Teen Titans Go than Powerpuff Girls 2016. Because in this episode, because in this episode, the Teen Titans actually act completely in character for their Go versions. Hey bruh, you wanna hear me beef the alphabet? That sounds like a super fun and disgusting way to learn my letters. While the Powerpuff Girls don't act like their 2016 versions, but more like they acted in the original show. Whether or not that's a bad thing, it's up to the individual viewer. If you're enjoying Powerpuff Girls 2016 because of the girls' characters, you might be a little disappointed going into this. The fact that this exists doesn't surprise me at all. Teen Titans Go, like it or not, is Cartoon Network's most popular show at the moment. The same cannot be said for the Powerpuff Girls 2016, which has not only been critically panned, even harder than Teen Titans Go, but it isn't getting the numbers of Teen Titans Go. And Cartoon Network has a vested interest in keeping Powerpuff Girls 2016 alive. All of those toys ain't gonna sell themselves, right? From a business perspective, this crossover makes complete sense. Their most popular show with another show flagging the ratings? Perfect. They're probably hoping that some of Teen Titans Go's following will spill over into regular Powerpuff Girls viewing, even though that's rather unlikely. Despite both being superhero shows and both being reboots, Powerpuff Girls 2016 and Teen Titans Go are fundamentally different shows. Teen Titans Go is very forward with its branding. While Powerpuff Girls 2016 seems to suffer from an identity crisis, not knowing what it wants to be, Teen Titans Go brands itself as a silly superhero show that tries to be subversive. It wants to be a show like Freakazoid or The Tick with superheroes that are crazier and sometimes more destructive than the villains that they combat. One of the main problems with the Powerpuff Girls 2016 is that it doesn't know what it wants to be. But one thing that seems fairly consistent is that it tries to play the superhero idea fairly straight. And yeah, there's a hint of irony for you with what they're updates of. But to be completely honest, these two opposing identities is why this episode works so well. This episode shows a firm grasp on what the flaws of both of these reboots have. And it doesn't exactly lampshade them, but it actually fixes them. If more episodes of either of these shows was like this episode, the shows, Teen Titans Go and Powerpuff 2016, would actually be good. It's possible, and there's a way. So, let's start out with Teen Titans Go. The reason this episode works, and why most Teen Titans Go episodes don't, is so fundamental that I'm surprised that I didn't notice it. This episode provides them with a straight man from the beginning of the episode until the end. Think about it. In this type of show, the villains are supposed to be there to serve as the straight man. Someone who is entirely serious and wants the story to go as it's quote-unquote supposed to. Most Teen Titans Go episodes do not have villains. And when they're there, they they tend to, at best, be cameos or just plot points. At worst, they could be like Control Freak, a villain that just adds to the silliness when there's a balance that's needed. This is why, for instance, Squidward exists in Spongebob. Imagine Idiot Box without Squidward. It's just Spongebob and Patrick making noises in a box for 11 minutes. And yes, many, many Spongebob episodes have taken that idea way too far, shoehorning in Squidward for no reason. But Spongebob, as a show, would be a lot worse off without Squidward. Because a lot of the times, Teen Titans Go is more or less a Spongebob 
SpongeBob without a Squidward. And sometimes certain critics or criticisms of the show, real or imagined, become their Squidward. And I'll get to why that doesn't work when I review finally a lesson. An 11 minute episode about buying rental property. In realistic and tedious detail, because the writers of the show want to state that the show is better off with no lessons. Because they believe the critics of the show think that it should be ending each episode with a lesson about friendship or whatever. Something that no critic has ever said about the show ever. The original Teen Titans sometimes had real Really funny episodes or jokes that didn't require the villains around. But that's because characters like Raven or Robin played the straight man to jokes that came from Starfire or Beast Boy. In this show, Robin and Raven are just as silly as the rest of the cast. In this episode, though, the Powerpuff Girls and the narrator and even Mojo Jojo play an awesome straight man to the Teen Titans, and it works beautifully. In another dimension, I, Mojo Jojo, have discovered where superheroes do not care about stopping villains. So, one of my own catchphrases is that pointing out your problems doesn't make them go away. But this episode basically succeeds at what everyone else trying to play that card has tried and failed at. It acknowledges the flaw and lampoons it creating some comical exchanges between the Power of Girls and the Teen Titans. Honestly, this episode almost feels like a satire of the Teen Titans Go. You guys aren't very good at your jobs, are you? That sounds like a challenge. How did that sound like a challenge? The babies wish to determine which superhero team is superior. Let's be clear, this is not a competition. You want a competition? You got one! So the setup of the joke is how stupid the Teen Titans are acting, and the punchline is the reaction. Most jokes of Teen Titans Go! are set up with no punchline. And quite frankly, this allows them to keep building and making it more silly than if it was just the Teen Titans on their own. This is probably best demonstrated with the narrator and how seriously he's taking Robin acting like a total idiot. And so, with grim determination in his eye, Robin dramatically exited the room as the others looked on with concern for his well-being. If the joke was just Robin jumping out of a window like a total moron, it wouldn't be very funny. It's the narration that makes that joke funny. As for the Powerpuff Girls sides of things, it's going to be difficult to describe exactly how this improves on the typical show because, like I said, this feels more like Powerpuff Girls from the original show than Powerpuff 2016. But I think I got it. The Powerpuff Girls as characters on their own are really freaking boring. The most memorable parts of the original show was the villains. Like him, Mojo Jojo, Princess. The reboot pushes them all to the sidelines and deals with the girls' interpersonal relationships and their daily drama. But watching kids do typical kid stuff isn't very interesting, even for kids. This is why most kid shows and movies are fantasy. It can be interesting, but you need to be an excellent writer and have a special kind of creativity and talent to make it work. I don't think that Powerpuff 2016 is going to recapture the magic of the Powerpuff Girls' best rainy day adventure ever. And you know, if the original show was only about the girls talking to each other for every episode, it probably wouldn't have been a very good show. Powerpuff Girls worked best when they played against a much stronger personality. And I'll give Teen Titans Go one thing, their characters do have strong personality. It's both their strength and their weakness. With no one to play off of, it goes straight towards the audience, directly or indirectly, and it gets very annoying. But when it plays off the right people or the right environments, it can actually be really funny. This is probably why the best episodes of Teen Titans Go are satires or parodies. Yeah, besides this one, there are actually good episodes of Teen Titans Go. Like, video game references are 40-40-20. They don't balance out the bad episodes, but good episodes do exist, and it proves that this formula can be used correctly. And if the Powerpuff Girls play out the right people or environments, they can do pretty good things. No joke, like literally the day after I reviewed Painbow, Powerpuff Girls came out with an episode that I really enjoyed, Viral Spiral. That episode is basically a control freak episode if it took place in the internet. And that episode doesn't work because of the characters, but because of the environment and the jokes that came with it. Mojo Jojo, unfortunately, is the least of this episode. He doesn't really do much more than drag the plot along. And yeah, he's kind of the same in his usual appearances in the main show. If Powerpuff Girls 2016 can start writing better villains and side characters than, say, Bianca or Pack Rat, then their future looks very bright. Even with what we have in the 2016 version, their characters are malleable. They can play off of excess stupidity and incompetence. They can play off extremely dangerous and destructive monsters. Just about the only thing they can't play off, it seems, is each other, which unfortunately they're frequently forced to do. Sorry that I'm not going too deep into the plot with this one. It's a comedy show, so the plot is overly simple. It's just Mojo Jojo going into the Teen Titans Go world to create a monkey army. Nothing spectacular, but it doesn't have to be. 
Of the two shows, I think the Powerpuff Girls 2016 has a better chance of improving. The episodes are starting to head in the right direction after a pretty mediocre start. Both Viral Spiral and Bubbles of the Opera are pretty damn good. Although they still have a few key problems that they need to cure. Seriously, don't let your memes be memes because it's getting really old. I was able to forgive them in Viral Spiral because that episode took place in the internet, but otherwise it doesn't help the show whatsoever. And I don't think that I have seen one episode so far that had a plot that didn't have a very obvious inspiration. But, it's also possible for the Teen Titans Go to do something good and actually improve. This episode proves that. The tools are there, they've just got to use them. If I had one main piece of advice, they need to stop being so afraid to admit that they have problems. This and so, once again, the day is saved. No thanks to the Teen Titans. Seriously, what is wrong with those guys? This episode works so well because it constantly mentions how bad the Teen Titans are at being superheroes, and it uses that as a joke. But episodes like The Fourth Wall, The Return of Slade, Let's Get Serious, and Finally Lesson, they seem like they're so afraid to admit that if they don't brand themselves as the perfect show, they'll lose their audience. They don't so much as admit that they have a problem, they put forward these things and suggest that people are wrong for thinking that they're a problem at all. Ironically, those episodes are the most alienating thing that the writers can do. Not just for the critics or haters of the show, but to the audience who actually watches and enjoys the show. To get any appreciation from those episodes, you'd have to be both knowledgeable of the criticisms of the show and dislike said criticisms, which seems to be a minority of a minority. This show is aimed at kids, as they keep trying to remind us. Some of them are too young to use the internet, and some of them have very limited internet access and wouldn't be allowed on message boards or whatever, where these criticisms thrive. They can improve, though. If anything, episodes like this prove that there's no such thing as a lost cause. It might take perseverance and hard work, but it is possible. Both of these shows have been renewed for a new season, and I'm interested to see where they both go. I'll keep you updated when it happens. Yeah.